everybody, it's Tamara from Prairie Town Girl here on Etc. Eyes, and I have a, um, a fun journal project that I'm going to do today, so I thought I would bring you along with me. Um, I was going back through all of my saved videos that I keep for inspiration and um, of other junk journalers, and um, I came across something from Joanna Clough, I think that's how you say her name, um, and she has a wonderful tutorial on a no-sew um, junk journal that she, well it's actually it's not a junk journal, it's a journal <laughs> that she makes with um, large notebooks and it has this really neat cloth spine. So I wanted to do something similar, um, but I'm not going to use notebooks, and I'm, I'm going to do it a little differently. Um, but I'm going to put the link in the description box below so that um, you can go and... Which way is below? I'm not sure. <laughs> you can go and check out her original video as well and, and, um, and get some ideas there too. So, uh, there's a couple things that I wanted to do. Um, first of all, I've got this wonderful um, book that I haven't used often enough, a sampler of wayside herbs, and it's got these gorgeous, well, first of all, the pages are nice, thick, ivory, gorgeous paper, and then it has um, these beautiful full-page images. And in between, it's got these great black and white images as well. There's some more. There we go. There's some more of the colored ones. Um, so I wanted to use something from here on a cover. Um, so I pulled this one. It's so hard when there's two great images back to back, but um, I decided to use this one for my cover and then um, trying to I was trying to figure out what to cover uh, the inside of each of my signatures with and I thought well I'm going to use I'm going to use these black and white images and then the whole theme will be uh, sort of a botanical theme which is great because I had some leftover printouts from uh, Caroline's craft tree uh, so I wanted to use those up as well, and so those are in here. Um, now, so as I said, Joanna uses um, notebooks to make her journal. I used, I made signatures, and I put them all together already. I didn't want to um, bore you to death with putting together the signatures. Um, and then for the covers, I, um, I didn't have... Uh, boxes or uh, paper that was big enough so I cut up the cover of um, a bunch of calendars that I had because they're a little bit they're not super flimsy but they're not super um, um, heavy either they're just the right just the right weight so I've got four signatures I normally only do three but I'm gonna do four on this one um, because you want enough of a width in the spine so that you can see your fabric. And I'm going to use this this pretty white on white print that I used in um, one of my other very recent journals. Um, but I'm going to have it on the outside this time. Um, so my first step, before I get started with everything, I've got some brown craft paper. And I'm just going to cover each one of these covers. Um, number one, to, to kill the uh, image from peeking through. I learned my lesson on my last journal, <laughs> finally. Uh, and also just to provide a nice um, neutral backdrop. So um, the way I'm going to do that, just put that aside, um, I'm going to cut this to fit and so that I don't have any seams I'm going to have it sorry I'm going to have it meet in the middle I'm just going to wrap it around like that and have it meet right down the middle so I'm going to cut those papers 
and um, I'm going to glue them all on and I think I'll just use um, I think I'll use Mod Podge for this and then I'll come back and I will show you what the next step is okay so I've got my signatures together here I've got them covered um, and then what I did was um, I decided to sew down the center of each signature. So essentially, um, instead of starting with notebooks, right, we've just sort of created our own no -no notebook, um, junk journal style. <laughs> so the nice thing with that is that with this wraparound style, you usually get some page creep. But when you're junk journaling, it doesn't matter, right? You can have all kinds of uneven edges and things like that on your junk journal. So that's kind of fun. So the next part is kind of the messy part, for me at least. Um, and that's, like, I know people would probably wonder, why does she do things off camera? Uh, that's because I can be a little awkward and a little messy <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes it's just easier if I just do it and then I come back and you you don't need to sit and watch me glue something or um, cut paper that type of thing anyways uh, for this step um, case in point uh, when I opened my my glue bottle the glue just was like a volcano it was coming out so I had to start this next step um, but what we're going to do is um, glue the signatures together uh, back to back so that they would be like this uh, and so here's the one that I did already okay so it's like the outside of your signatures and I'm using this glue because it's a it's a little stronger than um, Mod Podge or glue stick or any of that kind of thing so um, it seems to have calmed down thank goodness <laughs> so I'm just gonna put this everywhere Lots down the sea or the uh, spine. A little bit more around the edges. There we go. And then just try to line up your signatures as best you can. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's sirens outside. <laughs> um, hopefully you can't hear that. Okay, so we just press it down, and then we add the next one on top. All right, so we've got our stack together. So I'm going to um, just find something heavy to sit on top of this. Just make sure it's all lined up. Um, or clamp it. Let's see if I have some big clips or something to clamp it shut. Um, because I really want that glue to stick, especially along the spine there. Um, so I'm going to let that sit for a while. And I will come back and... Uh, We'll see what the next step is. Okay, it's the next day, and um, I just had a big clean out of my desk because it was a complete explosion of a disaster, <laughs> and I couldn't find um, my next tool that I'm going to need, but I think I'm organized now, so. <laughs> um, anyways, I found some clips, and I clipped my paint, my little uh, signatures all together, and, and um, it looks like it worked well and I'm still able to open all the pages and um, it's all good. So the next step is to add some fabric to the spine. So I've cut my piece of fabric um, and I've got it uh, overlapping the front and the back, I don't know, about an inch or so. It's not, uh, it's not even like super even. I, I tore it on this side to try to get it even, but this side's cut. So anyway, so I'm going to attach my fabric. And if you watched my last video um, called One Journal, Many Looks, 
or I think it also might be called uh, in the title, I think it's called changeable journal cover, something like that. I will link above. Um, anyways, you'll know that my new favorite way to add fabric to my journals is with stitch witchery, which is just a fusible, um, basically a fusible, fusible adhesive. Um, and you just cut it to size and place it between your two layers and run your iron over it and it will um, adhere your pieces together and it will keep everything in place. Um, and that's all I'll need on, uh, on this side and on the back side as well. I might even run a little piece right down the center just to kind of hold things in place. So I'm going to put that in, uh, iron it all together, and then we'll come back and we will start adding our cover, which is exciting. I'll be right back. Okay, so that was super quick and easy. And um, I should just mention the reason I like the stitch witchery is because there's no bulk and um, you don't get glue seeping through um, your fabric if you use a wet glue. Um, so it's just, it's a nice, clean, easy finish um, and it just irons all together. So it's awesome. So the next step I'm going to do, and this is what Joanna does in her video, is she um, takes another piece of, of, bo of um, cardboard uh, and puts that on the top and bottom as for her covers and that's to sort of um, strengthen the cover up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to do mine a little differently. She painted hers and, and glued an image on the front but um, as I mentioned before I want to use this beautiful botanical graphic and I've got a number of other graphics I want to use on the inside of my signatures. So I thought the easiest way for me to cut these the proper size is to make a template of, um, of the size of my journal out of some see-through acetate and then that way when I place it down on my image I can see sort of exactly what I'm going to get um, and I hopefully won't make a mistake <laughs> and you know cut off the wrong thing or you know that type of thing so that's what I'm going to use I just realized though my um, my template I'm just going to make one mark on here for the front cover because the front cover is just a little bit narrower than the inside of the signature so um, you probably can't see that but there's a line there now that tells me where that where that piece will end okay so I'm going to go through and and cut those pieces so I'll figure out what I want to land on the cover and then um, on the inside I can use the full piece and look at this, I'm so excited. This whole uh, front cover from inside the, the original book is going to fit right inside of my journal cover. Um, I'm so excited, I think that will look great. And then for my signatures I've got other images like this that'll be like one of the pages and I don't mind if I've got some of this writing on there I think that'll look really cool so I'm going to go through and um, cut out these images and um, glue them on um, I will start with my covers and I will show you my progress as we go along all right so I thought I better stop and show you where I'm at before I get too far ahead of myself. 
Um, so don't forget, and this is something I always do, don't forget to put on, if you're going to put a closure like this, uh, like a tie closure on, don't forget to attach it before you attach your cover. Because <laughs> then it's squished inside two layers and it's um, got a little more strength to it. So um, I cut all my images out. I, um, for my covers, I sewed all the way around the edge and I inked just very, very lightly all the way around the edge. I tried not to go too heavy handed. Um, I've already glued the back one on and I used my uh, premium craft glue from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> but it seems to work. I laugh every time I call it premium glue but it does actually seem to work really well for me. So I haven't put the this one, the front cover on just yet but I'm about to. And I thought I should show you on the inside um, I have added um, all of my um, signature covers. So all those brown craft paper pages um, that were holding the signatures together, they now each have um, one of these black and white images on them. And what I did was before I glued anything down, I sewed around the page and I inked it lightly and then I glued it down. If you try to sew it after you glue it, you'll have, it'll be challenging. Not only do you have a lot of layers here, and some are quite thick, um, it'll be really hard to get into these, these corners here. So do yourself a favor and just sew around the page, uh, just a single layer of paper, um, use a long basting stitch so that you don't chew up your paper. Um, yeah, and that should help you get, if you want this look. I love the look of sewing on paper, but I'm a sewer, so <laughs> I don't know if that has something to do, it, do with it. Um, I've also left a lot of my um, threads um, out and rough, um, just to get that, I just wanted that look. Um, sometimes that look drives me nuts and I have to cut all the threads off. <laughs> and sometimes I keep them. It's just whatever mood I happen to be in. So I'm just going to quickly add um, my cover here. And I did do a little test with my uh, new glue sticks. I've got a little what do I get? A four pack of this glue stick, uh, which is better than the last glue stick I got, but it's it's not strong enough to hold something this thick. So um, I'm just going to make sure to try to get as close to the oops, close to the edge as I can without going over, and then all the way around. If you don't mind getting too messy, you can spread this all around with your fingers. And then we just place it down. And I always like to use my brayer because that evens out the glue underneath. If you're a beginner paper crafter, and you're wondering if a brayer is uh, worth the money to add to your toolkit, I say go for it. I use this on almost every project. Uh, and this is just a recollections brayer. Uh, so I got it from Michael's. I probably got it on with a 50% off coupon. <laughs> um, I can see it is coated in all kinds of glue. Some people use them to spread paint around, that kind of thing. Um, I mostly just use mine to um, make sure something that I'm gluing down is, is secure. So I think I'm going to um, clip this again and leave it for a little while, make sure it's super, super on there. 
Um, but yeah, we're almost done, really. Okay, I think my, um, my cover is nice and secure. It's on there. Um, I'll just give you kind of a close-up look. There we go. Um, you've got the fabric on the spine and then the back. Um, we've got our ties on there. This cover right now, I feel like it's a bit bare. As beautiful as this image is, I think it needs some more. So when I'm doing my decorating, I'm thinking I might, I might add some metal corners. I'll probably add like a, um, maybe a metal, what do you call that? Like a nameplate kind of thing. I think it's going to look really great. Um, I've got the inside covered. We've got lots of beautiful printables from um, Caroline's Craft Tree. Um, so don't forget, you've got she does. Um, she's got these great pieces that have the line background with the flowers, plus just the plain line background pages. I've got um, lots of texture throughout because I've got. Um, scanned images of coffee dyed paper but I've also got the real thing in here as well and this has a bit of a doily impression on the background we've got some lined uh, accounting pages some of my own printables um, more uh, grungy for, uh, coffee dyed papers um, and so on and these um, signature covers in the middle of each signature, they, they basically almost provide a writing board, actually. They're so nice and um, solid. Um, got some of my own paper in there that I made. Uh, what else do we have in here? Keep going. And it, and it lays flat, so that's nice. When you open it up, you can have a nice flat layout. Um, what else can I tell you about this one? It's huge. There's a lot in here. <laughs> I think I counted, there's a, probably over 160 pages altogether. Um, so this is going to take me a little while to decorate. Um, and there's, uh, this is what I used on the back. I think I, did I show you what I was going to use on the back? I've got the scientific, the index of scientific names of all the plants. Um, for the back. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> and then our back page. So, um, yeah, so that was fun. Um, make sure you go to see, now I'd, I'm probably saying her name wrong, Johanna, Johanna Clough. Go and see her uh, original project. Um, she, she's got, you know, tens of thousands of views on her <laughs> project. So if, if you haven't already seen it, go and check it out. Um, I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description box, wherever that is. Um, but I hope this uh, was fun for you. I hope this gave you some ideas and something new to try. And um, make sure to come back and I will have the flip through of the decorated journal very soon. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, stay crafty. See you soon. Bye-bye.